Welcome back to Sahara TV. My name is Rudolf Okonkwo. This is the Skype call segment, when we give you the chance to give us feedback on some of the topics we've been discussing today. And today it's been very, very interesting. We spoke to an economist, Henry Boyo, who helped us to understand the budget of 2014 and also how Nigerian economy is, is working for the poor and for the rich. We also spoke to the chairman of the Finance Committee of the National uh, Assembly, the House of Rep. And he talked about the encounter the, that the committee had with the Minister of Finance and what they think about uh, the way the economy is going. So we're going to discuss some of those issues. We're also going to talk about social media. We had a very good conversation with some of the influential people on social media about the direction and the impact of social media in Nigeria. And um, when we get to that topic, we want to hear from you, uh, if you are joining us, about your experience on social media. And of course, our question of the day is around the, the fact that Nigeria just signed a kind of um, transfer of prison, uh, prisoners with Britain, which will mean that about 700 Nigerian prisoners are going to be brought back home to finish their prison time in Nigeria. And our question is, um, being that it's likely that James Ibori, the former governor of, um, of Delta State, might be one of the prisoners coming back home. Do you think it's a good thing for him to come back home and finish his sentence? Now, to start us off, we have Hansen in Geneva. Hansen, welcome to Sahara TV. Thanks so much. We have uh, Ebi in Portacot, Nigeria. Ebi, welcome to Sahara TV. Hi, good evening, Rudolph. And uh, we have, from London, we have, uh, no, from Canada, we have Yemi. Yemi, welcome I'm to Sahara TV. Sahara TV. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Uh, from Canada, too, we have Collegeo. Collegeo, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you, thank you. And, um, okay, sorry, a minute. Okay, I'm missing somebody. Uh, Yemi C in London, okay. Yemi C, welcome to Sahara TV. Thank you, Udo. Yeah, all right. So let's start with the issue of Nigeria's economy and, and the budget. Uh, when we spoke to Henry Boyo, he, he said several things. He said he had no confidence in the way the people who manage the Nigerian economy are doing so. Uh, let me read a quote from what he said. He said that we were discussing the letter that Sanusi wrote to the president. And this is his opinion, that Sanusi wanted to distract attention the, from the failures of the Central Bank of Nigeria to manage the economy. Uh, he believes that there is no progress and that there is no growth. And he thinks that the Minister of Finance, Ngozo Konjiwala, has been deceiving Nigerians. Uh, let me come to you. Let me start with you, Hansen, in Geneva. So uh, I don't know if you have followed the budget uh, uh, released this year uh, for 2014 that is still going to be discussed by the House and the Senate. but. Uh, if you have an idea of what's in the budget, uh, what do you think about it? Do you think that it's going to serve the people, or is it the same kind of budget that ends up not working for the people? To be sincere, Rudolph, I've not seen the budget, and uh, I don't think I can comment much concerning the budget anyway. What about the economy? How do you, do you follow the... Because Nigeria, according to uh, the minister, has been experiencing 6% growth for a while. And, and my question I ask is, people in government is, how, what does that mean for the ordinary people? Is there any change in their lifestyle, in the, the standard of living? What do you think about Nigeria's economy? I think it's, it's all about wash, wash. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Ebi, Ebi, you are in Portacot. You are in Nigeria. Yes. Nigeria has yes. been, this is what they're saying, 6% growth. And in fact, they said that sometime this year, Nigeria's economy will be number one in Africa, the, the largest economy in Africa. Have you been feeling that change? Well, the truth is, I think a lot of Nigerians underestimate just how badly Nigeria's economy had been treated in the past. And so it's like renovation. When you renovate a building, you don't know how bad it is to actually crack a wall or break a fence or something. Then you start the repairs. What seems to be going on right now is this 6% growth is actually going into sustainable underpinnings of the economy, changing the way we do things. For 
ever, it has been a rental economy where people without any productive input make money. I see that a lot of that is being turned around right now. So that if you're not ready to be productive, you will scream, complain, cry, because they have blocked a lot of the free ways that people use to make money. Now, how does it convert to day-to-day -day life? If you are willing and ready to try and do something productive, not depend on one godfather or godmother or somebody, you will find a way. Young people, educated people are now talking of things like entering agriculture. It doesn't mean that you might farm, but you can put your money towards those who are doing the farming. There are other areas. As we have the change in lighting and in power and all that, smaller businesses, people who are making windows, all that will be able to do their businesses easier. So it will not happen immediately, but that's because we're already in a very bad well, where we have this veneer of money. People think we are rich. We have only 2 million barrels of, of oil a day, and we have 160, 170 million. That is actually where an oil poor country, but I'll always say this, our riches are actual, actually 2 meters above the ground in our head. It's not 2,000 meters under our feet in oil wells. Mm. I think the current administration is trying to turn our minds from being underground to being above ground. Use your head, use everything that God has blessed an average Nigerian with, and there is nothing that will stop us. So this 6% is going into the ground, but from there, you have growth. By the time, since somebody said, it, said, said something, if we have been growing at 6% with no light, by the time there's power in, say, three, four, five, six months, we might grow to 12%. That is something to look forward to, but each of us has to be prepared to actually work, build this nation and not continue slagging it off and insulting everybody and moaning and groaning and carping. Okay, very good. EMEC, um, people, you, you had Ebi, uh, he's in Nigeria, and, and his opinion is that people, especially people like us who are abroad, uh, the way we look at Nigeria and the performance of, of the economy, we tend to think that um, we want something to happen overnight. How, how do you look at it when you watch what is going on in Nigeria, the economy from London. I, I, yeah, I, uh, yeah, Rudolph. Uh, one thing is, even if we're abroad, we see our family members in Nigeria. We see our friends in Nigeria, and some of us do visit Nigeria. So it's not as if we are totally caught up from the realities in Nigeria. Mm. And I would say, when you say 6% growth, growth is not something you put on, on paper. Growth has to reflect on the lives of the ordinary people. It is not just about reading from your paper or making calculations. The thing is, even though we are abroad, we are family members, we know how the healthcare system works, and we know there is no improvement. In fact, it is just getting worse. We keep on hearing and getting news of family members dying from little, little things that ordinary malaria, ordinary stroke, people don't have good health care, it is getting worse. So when you mention growth, growth is not about what you put on paper or what makes you look good, that your, your government is achieving something or that your ministry is at least doing something. You can't, people don't eat paper. People have to eat what is available. And the truth is the average life of the average Nigerian is getting worse. It's not getting better. We will be deceiving ourselves to say that there is growth in that nation. There is none. Healthcare is not available. It's not easily accessible. Simple things in this in this 21st century that people should not be dying of are still things people are dying of. We've had friends in the last few weeks. I've had friends died of fibroid women who just went into hospitals to got to have a fibroid growth removed. Those are routine routine procedures in developing countries, not just even developed countries, but in developing countries. But Nigeria, you, you, have, you lose friends to that. A friend just died, just going to start to have fib vibrant growth. You, you've had people dying of stroke. So in the case of healthcare, I would say that our hospitals are just mortuary in li lying in wait for people. And when you talk about eating food, I, I mean, you, you, don't, you cannot see the 6% growth in the average life of the, Nigerian, uh, 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 of the Nigerian on the street. So if we can't see it, I think it is wrong to say, oh, it is tentative growth or a growth under the ground. What do we want to do with a growth under the ground? We've had oil in our ground for how many years now? What has that done to the average life of the average Nigerian citizen? Nothing. But what has it done for the politicians? A lot. It's giving them a lot. It's giving them power. It's giving them access to the corridor of power. But the oil has never really been very helpful to the average Nigerian. So the thing is, 
it is not about what we want to do, how to be productive. It's not that people are not, don't want to be productive in Nigeria. In fact, Nigerians are one of the most productive people on earth. I agree. But okay. the thing is, do they have the resources to support okay. their productivity? Okay. Yeah, me see. Okay. We'll come back. about sovereign as mining. We'll we come... don't have that infrastructure. We don't have employment. What employment has the government provided in the last few months? What have they budgeted for? Your employment growth. Our rate of unemployment keeps on growing. And you are telling me we have 6% growth. This six percent growth in unemployment or six percent growth in employment. I think we should get that clear. All right, let me see. Uh, let's let's go to uh, College Joe. Yeah. This is what the chairman of the uh, House of Rep Committee on Finance said. He said that because they sent fifty questions, they gave fifty questions to the Minister of Finance, and she hasn't answered it. And he said on our show today that we want to know how the money is being received. That is the money that comes from oil and how much money is being distributed that, that the minister keeps giving one excuses after another. And she hasn't answered even one of their questions over the economy. So um, uh, in the news also yesterday, I saw where she came out from a meeting and the media were trying to ask her questions and she brushed them off. Um, you are in Canada and is this kind of thing acceptable in, because most people in Nigeria may not understand that we are trying to develop a democracy. And meanwhile, that what we are doing is not acceptable in other parts of the world where we have functional democracy. So what is this acceptable where you are in Canada? Rudolph, it's like you have been reading my mind throughout. Rudolph, you see, in Canada here, just little issues. I call them little issues. But to Canadians, they are vital issues. I mean... I'm talking about someone, you know, what is $90,000? It's nothing to the Nigerian politician. I would say it's even nothing to those that occupy that elite class in Nigeria. But just because that person gave another person 90000 it's a big issue. And the prime minister is, on, is in hot seat every time he go into, goes into the question period. They're questioning him. Young man, tell us about this 90000 What is 90000 And I keep asking myself, and Canadians are going crazy. And the election is coming, and they, they want to know how the God, how will someone take out of the taxpayers' money. That's just ninety thousand, and I've never seen the prime minister say no. He's not going to answer any question. Sometimes, sometimes at the other time, he was in a meeting, and some people came with a crack or a cracker or whatever they call it, just to display their their own their own um, they are protesting against the climate, and they never they were they were not harassed. Mm -hmm. You get what I mean? Just mm -hmm. to show you the left, you, you you know about Rockford too. Rockford, the mayor of Toronto. You could see questions every day. They ask him every day, like, "What are you doing?" So it, that's that's that that displays, you know, the characteristics and attributes of governance. Mm. We I've, I've told you before on this show, we don't practice democracy. Again, I call, let me use the word the uh, MNC use. All we practice in Nigeria is, is in paper. Mm. Our democracy is in paper. Mm. Our, mm. You, you All right. Democracy. You cannot question an education minister. No one. This is just crazy. All right. Uh, Ayemi, I will come to you and I will ask you about, about um, looking at all these things in, in context uh, with the election coming up and if, if there is any chance for change. But we are going to take a short break. We want to um, take care of something in, in a minute. So stay, stay tuned and all of you should stand by, please.